I experienced that. A man tried to take my life in Newport News with a hunter's knife. Tried to cut my, tried to, tried to cut my chest open. He didn't come to shave my face. You don't shave with a hunter's knife. Pastors today confront a wide array of challenges that can threaten the stability and unity of their congregations. These challenges range from personal attacks and societal pressures to internal church conflicts. Gino Jennings, a prominent pastor known for his fearless stance on various issues, exemplifies how courageous leadership can address these challenges. However, beyond fearless leadership, the role of open communication and mediation cannot be overstated in resolving internal strife and maintaining church unity. I was on my way back to the hotel and I noticed a car kept following me, so I deliberately went away. I ain't had to go. I deliberately went around certain streets, you know. Follow me. Pull up to the gas station, pump my gas, fella pull up, open his, you know, door. <laughs> you took my woman. I'm like, who, me, who, who are you? I don't know you. He said, you Pastor Jenner? I said, yes. You preach against remarriage divorce. My wife left me. I said, sir, well, your beef is not with me. Your beef is with God. Well, he couldn't see God. He saw me pumping gas. So when he stepped out that car and he kept going up, 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 way taller than I am, looking like he's pushing close to 300, a bald head, his head was like a, a giant llama bean. Pastors often face direct threats and assaults, both physical and verbal. Gino Jennings has been vocal about receiving threats to his life, due to his uncompromising preaching style. Such threats can be a significant source of stress and can deter pastors from addressing contentious issues. Nonetheless, pastors like Jennings continue to speak out, driven by a sense of duty to uphold biblical truths. This kind of fearless leadership is essential, but it must be supported by a church environment that prioritizes safety and security for its leaders. And I wasn't going to let him wrestle me. I wasn't stupid. I was street smart. You don't let a man that size wrestle you. What for? Someone said, why run? If you got a hunter's knife, obviously you know how to use it. Why would I run with leather sole shoes? Where am I going to get to? Someone said, Pat, you should have prayed. You're right, but I didn't think of it. See, I don't believe in trying to project something I'm not. I didn't think of it. Yeah, but see, when he started talking, he was talking to Pastor Jennings. But when that hunter knife swung on me, he swung on Gino. Can I get an amen? Societal pressures also weigh heavily on pastors. In a rapidly changing world, pastors are frequently called upon to address contemporary issues such as social justice, political unrest, and moral relativism. These topics can be polarizing and can create divisions within the church. Pastors must navigate these issues carefully, balancing the need to remain relevant and engaged with society while upholding the core teachings of their faith. Open communication within the church can help in this regard, as it allows pastors to explain their positions and engage in meaningful dialogue with their congregations. Internal church conflicts present another significant challenge. These conflicts can arise from various sources, including differences in doctrinal beliefs, personality clashes among church leaders, or disagreements over church policies. When left unresolved, such conflicts can lead to factions within the congregation, undermining the unity and effectiveness of the church's mission. Mediation is a valuable tool in addressing these conflicts. By providing a neutral platform where all parties can voice their concerns and work towards a resolution, mediation helps to restore harmony and build stronger relationships within the church. Yeah, he swung on Gino. I keep it, I keep it real. I wasn't down there, oh, Jesus, do something, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No. See, I was... I, I, I waited on the Lord. <laughs> you know, but Gino stepped in. You know? That hunter's knife, man, that blade was yay long. And the blade like was about as wide as my hand. He was swinging all while when I, the sound of that thing, when it first swung past me, it whistled. 
I just straight. I'm like, whoa, whoa, Jack, whoa. Right then, Pastor Jennings, you know, you know what I mean? You know, Pastor Jennings, he, he may went and sat in the car somewhere. Open communication is crucial in preventing and resolving conflicts. It fosters transparency and trust, which are foundational to a healthy church environment. When church leaders communicate openly with their congregation, they demonstrate a willingness to be held accountable and to listen to the concerns of their members. This approach not only mitigates misunderstandings, but also empowers congregants to participate actively in the life of the church. Gino Jennings' ministry, for example, is marked by his direct and open communication style, which, despite being controversial at times, has garnered him a dedicated following. Moreover, mediation can facilitate reconciliation in cases where conflicts have escalated. Mediation involves a third-party mediator who helps the conflicting parties reach a mutually acceptable agreement. This process is particularly effective in church settings because it aligns with biblical principles of peacemaking and reconciliation. By engaging in mediation, church leaders and members can address the root causes of their disputes and work towards restoring fellowship and unity. This method not only resolves the immediate conflict but also strengthens the church's ability to handle future disagreements constructively. In addition to addressing conflicts, open communication and mediation contribute to the overall spiritual health of the church. They create an environment where members feel valued and heard, fostering a sense of community and belonging. This is especially important in larger congregations where individuals might otherwise feel overlooked. By promoting a culture of open dialogue and conflict resolution, churches can ensure that their members are spiritually nurtured and supported, the importance of pastoral support networks should also be emphasized. Pastors, despite their leadership roles, are human and can experience burnout and emotional distress. Support networks, including pastoral peer groups and counseling services, provide a safe space for pastors to share their struggles and receive encouragement. These networks can also offer practical advice on conflict resolution and stress management, helping pastors to lead more effectively. Furthermore, training in conflict resolution should be an integral part of pastoral education. Many pastors enter ministry with a strong theological foundation, but limited experience in managing conflicts. By equipping pastors with skills in mediation and open communication, seminaries and training programs can better prepare them for the realities of church leadership. This training should include practical exercises and role-playing scenarios to build confidence and competence in handling disputes. It is also essential to recognize the role of church governance structures in conflict resolution. Effective governance provides clear procedures for addressing grievances and conflicts, ensuring that they are dealt with promptly and fairly. Churches should establish policies that outline the steps for conflict resolution, including when and how mediation should be used. These policies provide a framework that supports open communication and accountability, helping to maintain order and unity within the church. In conclusion, the challenges faced by pastors are multifaceted and require a comprehensive approach to address effectively. Fearless leadership, exemplified by figures like Gino Jennings, plays a crucial role in confronting threats and societal pressures. However, to resolve internal conflicts and maintain unity, churches must also prioritize open communication and mediation. These tools foster transparency, trust, and reconciliation, creating a healthy environment where all members can thrive. By investing in pastoral support networks, training in conflict resolution, and effective governance structures, churches can equip their leaders and congregations to navigate conflicts constructively, ensuring the long-term spiritual health and unity of the church community. If you like this video, please share with your friends and give us your comments to help us improve. Thanks for watching.